delighted to be joined by the Housing and Community Secretary, Robert Jenrick. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell us what happened tonight? Well, good evening. The Prime Minister has always said that if there's a good deal to be done, he will work hard to achieve it. And that was the purpose of the dinner this evening, to see whether and where there is room for further negotiation. It sounds as if, from the conversations I've had with the Prime Minister's team tonight, that there are still very significant areas of disagreement. Uh, so I don't want to uh, give false hope. Uh, but he did conclude with Ursula van der Leyen that we should get the teams back together in the coming days and they would work hard to see if there is a way forward until Sunday. And then Sunday would be the decision point, both for the Prime Minister and for President van der Leyen, as to whether there is ultimately a deal to be done or whether we need to accept that it, the, the, the disagreements are too great and we need to move forward uh, you know, in, in another direction. So there okay. will be a few more days now of concerted effort to breach those divides. But I have to say there are some very significant areas still at stake. The areas okay. that we've known for some time, fisheries, the level playing field and the governance arrangements uh, that uh, surround do you, them. Do you feel that tonight we got closer to a deal or further away? Uh, I, I think there is there was a good discussion, but there was no clear movement in the right direction. Uh, the Prime Minister, I think, has been admirably clear about his objectives. He wants to ensure that as we uh, end the transition period, we regain our sovereignty, as you would expect, uh, over our fisheries and our waters. And that although we can maintain high standards, that we're not bound to the EU in the future and that we can find the kind of competitive advantages... And uh, and innovations that Nigel Farage spoke of. And, and we're not going to compromise on those things. Just... That was what Brexit was about. And okay. the Prime Minister is going to keep negotiating to see if it is possible to secure that kind of arrangement. If it's not, then I think with regret, we'll obviously end the transition period uh, and trade I mean, on the kind it, of arrangements we does... have. Uh, with other countries. It does feel like there is deadline after deadline after deadline. And even this Sunday deadline is a deadline where we might then have more talks. I mean, we're taking it very, very close to the wire here, aren't we? Well, I think that's true. But it also shows that the Prime Minister is committed to keep on working to see if there is a deal uh, to be done. But as I said at, at the beginning, it has to be a good deal. There's absolutely no sense that the Prime Minister is going to compromise on the fundamental tenets of Does... Brexit, which is about our sovereignty, our freedom uh, to set our own rules and regulations from the 1st of How January much... onwards. How much and does so he if include... there is an ability to do that, okay. then he's going to try and get that done. But How if much... Not, uh... How much does he include you, the Cabinet, in all of this? I mean, have you seen a draft deal as it is at the moment? When was the last time you had a Cabinet on this? Well, the Prime Minister updated Cabinet uh, yesterday. So we have regular conversations about this. Each of us are involved, in particular, in the areas that affects our own departments. So we're, we're very uh, much involved. But understandably, I, I, don't, I think people would understand this, the negotiations are being led by Lord Frost yeah. and the Prime Minister directly. The Prime Minister is very involved personally. That's the reason why he went this evening to meet Ursula uh, van der Leyen. And the next few days are going to be an intense period for Lord Frost to see if there is a, a way forward. Uh, but I'm afraid there are some very significant disagreements and on if, the areas that we've been aware of for some time. I, and if the EU wants to bridge that divide, then they're going to have to show some movement. And the things we're asking for, I think, are still entirely okay. reasonable. They're the same You've things they've offered them. to Canada and yeah. to other countries. You have mentioned them. So just, I just want to ask you about what happens if they don't bridge that divide, if we do end up with no deal. I mean, Boris Johnson talks about us being a magnet for investment. But, you know, your own um, impact assessment by the HMRC says it would cost £15 billion a year in administration costs if we go for no deal. We've just had a year in which businesses have been slammed by COVID. Do you really think they can take that right now? Well, that, this is one of the reasons why we want to secure a, a, a good free trade agreement. But I, I'm also confident that in the longer term, the UK will thrive under any arrangement. The fundamentals of the UK economy remain. Of course, this year has been very challenging, but that's the same for every other country in the world. We expect 
the UK to succeed, whether or not we have these uh, the, the free trade agreement on the sort of Canada style arrangements. If we are trading on the same arrangements the EU does with Australia, then that will also provide opportunities. So you I think don't think we've no got deal, anything to be, to be afraid clear, of in you these think, circumstances. You think no deal will provide opportunities for the UK? Well, I think the fundamentals of the UK economy are very strong and we will thrive and prosper in either circumstances. And I think it would be quite wrong for the UK just to take any old deal, which seemed to be the implication of what Kate Green, for example, was suggesting a few moments ago. We're not going to do that. The Prime Minister is going to secure a deal if it is a good one and one which is truly in line with the fundamental premise of Brexit. And on the remaining issues at stake, that means that we have control of our waters and our fisheries. And we can, of course, come to an amicable arrangement about access to those waters. But and we are ultimately in control of that. And with respect to the level playing field, that we don't intend to reduce our standards but equally, we're not going to be bound in a sort of dynamic way to the standards okay. and, and rules and regulations just... that the EU might choose to come up with in the years ahead. That's obviously not fair. We want to assess those on a case by case basis. Robert, if we I just want to align you, ourselves. We can and we'll I've do. only got a few seconds left and I just want to ask you a quick question. Your housing secretary and I noticed that you recently said on cladding, it would take a number of years to remove dangerous cladding for buildings. And I just wanted to ask you about that. We saw Grenfell. Why isn't this a priority? It is a priority. Uh, in fact, only a few hours ago, I was discussing it in my department. We're working extremely hard. We have made a lot of progress on Grenfell style cladding, which was the most dangerous form of cladding and the first that we really identified. We should end the year with 95% of all buildings either having had that cladding removed or okay. uh, workers on site. But we also know now that there are other forms of cladding as well. And we're working on that. We've okay. put £1.6 billion pounds against it. Uh, but we're coming up with other ideas and solutions to help the thousands of people who are trapped in a very, very difficult okay. situation Robert, through no, absolutely no fault of their own. Robert Jenrick, thank you very much.